good in the bedroom. What up guys, it's Carl. Welcome back to uh, one of my favorite vids. It's my annual bedroom tech tour where we take a look at all of the tech here in the bedroom. I've got some special giveaways, so make sure you leave a comment down below. Make sure you're subbed. I will leave that info uh, later on or just down in the description. I know YouTube is really struggling with spam, so I really just try to connect with you guys on one of the social media sites like Instagram. I'm Verify there. It just makes things a lot easier, so uh, don't fall for the spam. Let's get to the tech with the first thing in any bedroom, which I guess makes it a bedroom, it's the bed itself. So you can see behind me, I have a brand new mattress. This is the Eight Sleep mattress. And if you recall from a couple months ago, I was in Miami for the Grand Prix. Eight Sleep is actually one of the main sponsors of the Mercedes team. So much fun out there, but so effing hot, so humid. One of the hottest races that I've been to. Wish I had one of these uh, mattresses in the pod that I was sitting in. And technically Eight Sleep isn't just a mattress company. It's actually the tech that goes over top. So you can actually get it in two different options if you need a new mattress you can score it with that combo or if you have an existing mattress you just get the cover that goes over top and that's where actually a lot of the tech is built into and they've just come out with their brand new pod 3 which is the one that I've been testing and if you do struggle with sleep and if you are into sleep tech which is definitely a thing this is actually marketed as the ultimate sleep fitness machine. It's almost like it's a, a workout device in its own. You can actually actively cool or heat separate parts of the mattress. So you can see on the side of my bed, there is this separate little unit that acts as the cooling system that helps pump water through it. When you're setting up the the device. I'm talking like it's a, a smartphone or a computer. When you're setting up the mattress, it almost looks like you're plugging into the matrix. There's a bunch of different coils that actually feed water into the entire mattress itself. And from there, you can cool separate areas of the bed because I do sleep on the far side. Catcher actually sleeps uh, closer to the door this way. And since we have different uh, sleeping preferences, I am someone that likes the room to be an ice box. AC has to be pumping. My feet usually stick out underneath the blankets. I am really, really hot when I sleep. I like to have my side of the bed at the coldest setting. So I've got my side set to minus six and you can actually track everything through their app. And that actually actively changes throughout the night and from here you can actually see your proper sleeping cycle so I will use last night as an example you can see that I got close to seven hours I should be pushing towards that ideal goal of eight I got some pretty decent REM cycles and my heart rate dropped to 39 in the middle of the night and I know that people love to get in depth about uh, their sleep data so this is probably the best way to do it without having to wear any say extra sensors any extra straps say even your Apple watch so yeah, overall, I've been super happy with it in the past couple of weeks, and I will try to achieve my eight hour sleep goal as the months go on. So I'll keep you guys posted. You can actually use the code Carl, which will save you $250 off your sleep pod. I will leave that link down below. And speaking of Link, he does like to sleep on our bed. He also is the king of the bedroom and has three beds in total. So our bed, he has his little doggy pad I think that's his actual throne. And he also has his little cage, which he likes to honestly go between uh, three of them throughout the middle of the night. That's probably why in my uh, sleep analysis, my tosses and turns are around five or six per night. That is him getting up, rotating throughout uh, all different spots. So he has taken up the most amount of room in the bedroom. He is king here. Have been dethroned. <laughs> So moving on to the next piece of tech right off to the side this way and I every video or every year I go back and forth should I have a TV in the bedroom last year I didn't the year before that I did vice versa we have gone back to having a TV. So this is the 75 inch Sony X95K. This is Sony's first foray into mini LED tech and the main reason for actually having a TV here is solely watching stuff on the weekend, mostly F1 races. And as the Premier League is uh, starting up again soon, I wanna be able to catch games a uh, Saturday and Sunday morning, usually around 6 a.m. I know that catch is probably sleeping, so I have it on silent or I have a pair of earbuds in. That's the main reason for having this TV. Selfish, I know, but uh, I love to watch my sports uh, in the morning on the weekends. And the main reason for going mini LED in here, it's usually the best or top form of an LCD panel. It is backlit. But if you look around, I have windows absolutely everywhere. So a ton of natural light, and that means a lot of reflections. That's where OLEDs really suffer. 
Even though they have the deepest blacks, the best uh, contrast ratios, the best color, everyone raves about OLEDs, they're A, super, super expensive, and B, I just cannot deal with the amount of glare. So the X95K, just like most mini LEDs, have a reflective coating on it, so it helps a ton with, of course, reflections. The design of the X95K is once again one of the cleanest that I've seen. It's a couple centimeters thin, once again not as razor thin as say an OLED, but I will argue the entire back panel is uniform and the same width. Typically OLEDs are thin on top and still have that big panel or big thing that sticks out at the end, which makes it tough for wall mounting. Obviously no wall mounting here as we are on the back of windows. The feet can be positioned in a couple options, which I like. So either in the middle, if your media console isn't that long, I've got them set to the longest width. However, mine is slightly too thin for the overall width. You can see just by maybe a centimeter or two, the legs stick out at the back. Something, once again, being nitpicky, but uh, I guess Maybe that's my own fault for having a very thin media console, but just maybe something to keep in mind. You can also have them low profile, so there is actually barely any room, which I think looks really sleek if you choose not to have a soundbar, or higher up if you want to pair that with some sort of sound system. So as you can tell, I don't have a soundbar option on mine. I think the speakers on this are fine just out of the box. I said mostly I use them with a pair of headphones just so I don't annoy a cat when I'm watching stuff in the morning, even though I tend to wiggle around when, uh, you know, someone scores a goal or someone overtakes someone uh, in F1. Watching content on this uh, has just been an absolute treat. I was actually really impressed with color reproduction, the depth of color overall, honestly, really compares with some OLEDs. I know that maybe the black levels don't get as deep. Don't get me wrong, they're black, they're not grayed out in any way, and unless you have this beside an OLED, picture quality on this is outstanding. On the back, you do have four HDMI ports, two of which are HDMI 2.1, which you can connect to a 4K 120 hertz connection, which I'm pretty much talking about next-gen gaming, where I have brought over my orange PlayStation 5. So I know a lot of you have flacked me uh, for my previous year's tech bedroom tour that there wasn't enough orange in the bedroom. So I have brought some in. So this is my custom painted orange PS5. And you can see that I've gone for a two-tone. So this side here, as you can see the uh, softbox light reflecting off the one glossy side over onto the matte orange side. So this was done for me by Colorware. They can send you these painted panels. I know that PlayStation offers these in a couple different color options out of the box, or I guess you can buy them from PlayStation themselves. Obviously, they don't have cool colors like orange. So if you want to customize your own, you can see how uh, sleek that looks. And I think that looks pretty on point. And this is a one of one PlayStation 5. Not that I get to spend a lot of time gaming, but if I am, I just want to be chilling in bed, relaxing, uh, vegging to the max. So I am still trying to make my way through a couple PS5 exclusives, mostly Spider-Man still. I think it's uh, one of the best games, even though we did see it at launch of the PS5. It's still one of the best looking. It's still one of the most fun. And I'm honestly looking forward to crushing that new Harry Potter game. I think it's coming to the PlayStation. I cannot wait to be exploring Hogwarts. Um, I'm one of the biggest like Harry Potter fanboys. So anyways, gaming experience, just like over on the TV experience itself, it's been phenomenal. Honestly, you're getting 4K at 120. If you aren't really hardcore gaming, if you aren't uh, one of those PC bros that swear by using a monitor, this combo here with the X95K and the PS5 is one of the best TV console combos uh, that you can rock sitting back watching or playing in bed cannot be beaten. So before we switch to the rest of the tech, which is mostly over on the bed stands, I'm gonna chat about the furniture quickly because I know a lot of you typically ask. So the bed media console, actually most of this furniture here is from Rogue Concepts. They've been one of my partners for uh, years. Way better quality than Ikea and it's actual real wood. It isn't that pressed cheap foam or pressed wood that you typically get if you ding it once uh, it starts to disintegrate. So I've had it for years and years and definitely recommend them. Pretty modern, minimal looking. So I've gone with the white slash walnut wood combo for most of this stuff. And uh, I think it's uh, pretty clean and pretty minimal. It's probably the stuff that we'll bring into uh, our new house, which is uh, currently getting built. 
And maybe the only thing that I would swap out instead of having a queen is to get, say, a king size bed in the future spot. So definitely dope. Once again, linked down below. Moving on to, okay, another piece of orange. You can see it off to the side of the media console. So of course my PlayStation 5 is sitting on top. We've just got a Porsche book, which it just kind of looks nice off to the side. We do have a little Caligaris lamp, which I have. It does have a Philips Hue light bulb inside. That is technically a piece of tech. So when I want to uh, turn on the mood here, I can switch the colors on that lamp to make things uh, a bit funkier, a bit spicier. Magic in the bedroom. <laughs> Underneath that, uh, there is a new box of Lego, which I'm gonna grab another piece of orange and my latest Lego acquisition. So big shout outs to uh, actually Michael Josh, who grabbed this uh, to me for my birthday. I picked this up from you in New York. I plan to build this out and I will hopefully have uh, this F1 car or this F1 Lego build here in the bedroom because that's where I watch uh, most of my F1. So I thought that was kind of cool. Maybe they'll live uh, off to the side beside the PlayStation. And since McLaren colors are orange with a bit of blue in it, I think that would uh, tie everything together pretty well as I try to have Lego in every single one of my rooms. I'm gonna start off on my bedside console. So I did mention this is from Rope Concepts again, once again in Walnut on top. Once again, I try to keep things minimal in the bedroom on the tech side, so I just have the bare essentials. My clock is the OG Nest Hub. Its main purpose is just to kind of tell me the time or I can glance at the time. I have found that it has worn out in the past couple of years. Google has just become a bit less responsive, so I'll ask it a question. Hey Google, when is Manchester United playing next? Let's go Reds. <laughs> My lighting choice is this cool little lamp from Gantry, and you can see that Kat also has one right off on her side. I think they're once again pretty minimal. They're pretty sleek looking. It's in this um, off-white, almost bone colorway. It just um, keeps things fairly neutral, the color palette at least. Talking like uh, I'm an actual interior designer, which uh, I am not. I just um, think it looks good, to be honest. I've got a little Porsche cup, which keeps some of my change, just extra little bits to keep things actually off of the console itself. And lastly, I have my main charger, which once again is a piece of tech that I've used for a couple years. I swear by it. It's the Logitech Multi Charger. So it charges three different things, all Apple. So I do have my 13 Pro Max, which sits there. I actually did switch to the green, I believe this is called the Alpine Green 13 Pro Max. Uh, my blue one, the camera lens kind of gave it on me and it has a nasty gash in the middle of it, which I actually got from recording uh, one of my car videos. The phone dropped from my lap onto the concrete and has this big gouge. So a uh, brand new phone. I know that the iPhone 14s will be coming in September. I'm going kind of off track, but that lives on there as well as my Apple Watch, the Series 7 in stainless steel. I rarely rock my Apple Watch. Like I said, even with this new eight sleep mattress, I wear it less and less because I don't track my sleeping patterns. Everything is done through the bed. Maybe when I work out, I wear it. And the last thing to charge on that Logitech pad is a place for my AirPods, which, um, I typically don't charge in the bedroom, but it's a cool little thing to have, especially if you want one unit to rule them all or one unit to charge them all. I will leave that link down below. Swinging off to Katja's side, I think she's even uh, a bit more minimal than me in terms of tech. So looking off, she does have her gantry light. She has this jade roller, which I always love to steal. You know, if you're looking for the most low tech piece of tech in the bedroom, this thing does it better than uh, anything with a battery. It just feels so good on your eyes. Guys, if um, you want a little guilty pleasure in life, use this thing while you're watching TV, while you're uh, browsing on your phone. It feels so effing good. Thanks, Kat. She actually does rock her Apple Watch quite a bit. So she has a Series 6, I believe. It's a couple years old. It is, once again, in stainless. She just charges that off to the side. And she actually has a OnePlus wireless supercharger, surprisingly. Good for her. I think I gave that to her a couple of years ago as well. So she just likes to charge her phone wirelessly. So uh, good on her. I know that the new OnePlus 10T 
is dropping next week. So depending on when this video is up, uh, there should be a new OnePlus phone app. So good on you, Kat, uh, keeping things uh, foreshadowing in the tech scene. Uh, swinging off from there, there is this little area rug, which I know a lot of you asked where I got that last year. I honestly think I picked this up from Wayfair. I will leave it linked. It's pretty generic. It costs around 110 bucks. It does what it needs to do for an area rug. Uh, it kind of ties in all the colors. Link likes to sleep on it, so maybe that's his fourth bed in the bedroom. Swing on to this way. I mentioned Link's little crate, which he still loves, even though um, we used to crate train him as a puppy. He still likes to go in there. It's almost like it's his little cave slash den. Moving on to behind the camera, we just have another walnut wood dresser. Barely any tech uh, lives there. I'm kind of looking right now. We have a piece of Lego. So that's my Darth Vader build. I actually was building that out when I did have COVID. I was quarantining in this uh, bedroom. Still have not finished it. I'm on uh, packet five. So one more pack to go. And I think that Darth Vader head will probably live on my nightstand. <clears throat> We've got a couple candles and probably the best addition to the bedroom. This is a trophy that I picked up from my VinFast trip. When I was in Vietnam, I somehow won a golfing trophy. So this finally says second runner up division B. So I was runner up to the runner up third place, probably the only golf trophy that I'll ever win since I'm terrible. Probably shows us something from the people that we were golfing with, but this is my cherished possession. Cat shakes her head every time uh, I look at this, but that is currently living on that little console. Actually, this and my YouTube plaque are some of my most prized trophies. So I will be holding on to this guy. And that is pretty much all the tech. We have two pieces of art. I think I've mentioned before, um, I am a FOMO person for putting art up. I, I hate it for some reason. Um, but we do have two little posters. Kat did take her master's in Oxford. So we have London and Oxford, England, two little posters where she went to school, which I'm actually visiting. And once again, Harry Potter was shot in Oxford. That's what I'm most pumped for. Uh, we're heading there this summer. So expect to see a lot of cheesy pictures of me um, on the grounds of uh, Hogwarts. <laughs> Last but not least, I'm looking off to the side. Bedroom has to have some sort of tech as well. So this is the Dyson V10 Detect Complete. By far the best vacuum that I've ever used. It does have a ton of smart features. It does also have this separate head, which I don't have plugged in right now, which is mostly for uh, carpets. I find this one is just better for picking up extra debris on carpets and softer surfaces. When we say vacuum links bed, this is way better than the soft bristle one or the soft comb one that the laser has. So if you guys haven't jumped on the Dyson game before, honestly, you can see how used mine is. The filter is way past um, its max load. I need to clean this out, but this thing is used. It's tried, it's trusted. It's super easy in a place like a bedroom. It's just easy to maneuver. This thing picks up so much hair, which uh, Link doesn't actually shed. So I'm just gonna tell Cat off as um, all these hairs are definitely hers that uh, this thing picks up. So super, super handy. And the best part, Dyson has so many different attachments that you can say plug on something smaller and then you can just say vacuum underneath the bed or around the mattress. Super, super handy guys. The V10 also has its own little LCD screen. What year are we living in where we thought that we'd be getting tech integrated into mattresses, LCD screens on the back of vacuums? Um, we're living in the future. I think that's uh, pretty nuts, but I think that's pretty much all the tech in this bedroom. That's pretty much the tech in the bedroom. In case any of you are wondering, this is the first time you're watching. We do have a condo in uh, the heart of Toronto. So really awesome place, really blessed with the size of this bedroom and uh, super lucky as we have our other bedroom, um, our second bedroom in our condo, which has now acted as my YouTube storage spot. So all the stuff gets delivered here it makes its way first before it goes to the studio into that second bedroom, which is slowly piling up. So I did mention a giveaway. I will give away something from this bedroom and some mystery prize from the second bedroom because there is so much tech. So just be sure you guys are subbed to the channel. Thanks again for the support. Links for all the products, links for Link, not Link, you can't buy him, um, will be down below, including that eight sleep mattress. So big thanks again uh, to them for sponsoring this episode. Big thanks again to Sony. Dope TV, love that I can watch sports in the morning and um, I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.